here at our Wednesday's tri board meeting. So we have the finance committee here. And the accountant snuck in the back. Um, we were going to uh, talk about our financial calendar for tonight. So two members of the board actually met with the department heads. That they want to give us an update on how that went. Um, sorry. Yeah, so we, uh, we met with the department heads today at their 11 o'clock meeting, and I may defer to you if you had any further feedback, but I think it was um, generally well received uh, in terms of people wanting um, to participate earlier in the process and appreciating the opportunity to provide uh, kind of feedback be above and beyond just the, you know, hear your budget marching orders, see what you can come up with. So, um, from that standpoint, you know, I think it, I think it went well. There were a couple of questions about um, town input. I think people seem to be generally in favor of that. You know, the, also the idea of engaging the, the public more. Uh, having a public budget hearing, there's a little bit of a topic about that, but that was a, a good opportunity for people to ask questions um, prior to town meeting. And there was also a suggestion that was put on the table about how we present information to town meeting and that um, it, it practice that's common in some other municipalities, not all, but some, is to have the uh, departmental requested budget as one column, the finance committee's recommendation, the select board's recommendation um, to the town. So break it apart so if in fact there were differences at one point people in town can see that so that's something you know I said that we would um, I made note of it and that we could talk about that as we get closer to, to a town meeting and you know work with but we usually do have how we vote on town meeting warrant it usually says and if it's not there usually it's because they haven't voted until the last minute so I, I guess that would be no, these everybody getting on board with these are the requested amounts. So, right. so an example would be, you know, for the sake of argument, um, let's say that the, uh, you know, town clerk requested a hundred thousand dollars, but the finance committee recommended eighty-five, and then the select board supported 15. the eighty-five. Yeah, yeah, or you know, eighty-seven or whatever. You know, that there were differences, that the the requests. Mm and then the approvals, so that way if somebody in town wanted to stand up and say, I'd like to understand why the town clerk wanted more money than what was actually approved for that department that they could. It's, it is something I've seen in other towns, but it isn't something yeah, I've well, seen in every town. That would be a town meeting or that would be beforehand? Well, at, at town oh, meeting is what, what was requested was yeah. at town meeting. And, and I had pointed out that I thought it was gonna be kind of confusing if, yeah. if we had far too many. I always thought we wanted to go to town meeting with a balanced budget, whether or not everybody agreed with what went on. I think we all come to a final conclusion on what we think should happen, whether we differ before it, then we kind of barter or banter with one another. That almost sounds like something you'd want on the website, like while the discussions are happening, not at yeah. the town it meeting. Exactly. Right, and that, that was my thought. I mean, I think that the opportunity for that would be to encourage people to come to the public hearing so that to the extent there are differences in requested amounts, that, that would be, I think, a more appropriate time to have the discussion. But again, I, I just want to report that, yeah. that it was suggested. So. Well, I think if going to town meeting, you're, you're going to make our town meeting and you're going to have a discussion on each budget process after we've already come to a conclusion on what and what we can spend and what the budget actually is that that's like not a good thing i mean we need to have it an agreement before we get to town meeting radar does allow for that tracking the level of the levels one two three if you want to go in that direction so i'm going to know that potential with the software i oh, can only i can only picture getting to town meeting we're going to be there like amherst for two or three nights yeah. <laughs> and we don't want that <laughs> well, if you want the Amherst version, <coughs> no, that would be probably a month long. The Amherst budget, you don't see the department heads' recommendations. And you don't see the, you don't see the. All you see is the town manager's recommendation, and then the uh, finance committee's either approval, I mean, uh, concurrence or disapproval of that, and they're not applied. That's all you see is those two numbers. Mm -hmm. 
you don't, even, you don't and actually you do see the last three years. There was some other discussion that came up that had to do with the finance committee specifically. So um, two things. One is there was a question that was just posed about uh, the uh, taping of finance committee meetings, taping or live filming of finance committee meetings. So um, suggested that that query go to your chair uh, to talk more about that. And then the other thing that came up relative to the calendar was just wanting to make sure that probably before January, and, and I don't think we need to do it now, but before January that between the select board and the finance committee we have more specific discussion around expectations. Um, the way this calendar is laid out right now, the intent would be that the finance committee would be copied on, on everything relative to the budget. You know, So there would be no reason for you not to be seeing if we're working on a projection or if we're, as departments turn in their budgets, you would get those at the, at the same time that we do. But the calendar's laid out in such a way that the um, department head meetings and the like are occurring with the select board and then we would formally turn over the budget to you mm -hmm. in the March time frame. So there was just some question about clarity, like what, what did that mean? Did that mean that you wouldn't actually do anything until you got it in March and then you'd start working on it then? And I think the assumption is that we'd be working collaboratively, like you'd have the opportunity to hear everything, you'd right. see everything. It's just that at some point we have to say, okay, we're done. And I know that that was a request that Howard had, had made during this cycle that right. we needed to kind of stop it earlier. Uh, so that was that was my concern is that the, the calendar by the way if you need copies of it we have extras right there so if you have do you should I pass them out to you? It's the same one that we have. Yeah. I don't know if I have it. It's okay. With me. Sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. that one, that's right. Um Did you want one gift? No, I'm just trying to close up this year. <laughs> 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 You're not going to worry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So in, 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 the, in the past years, uh, the Finance Committee and the Select Board have asked for a budget to be submitted earlier and earlier. And so now, now we're submitting a balanced budget based upon best information uh, in uh, mid-January. So January 15th to 20th is about when the budget gets submitted. Um, and that gives everybody January, February, March, April to work out all the issues. Um, if you're getting a balanced budget in March, I was just concerned that you had enough time. But Molly presented a calendar which would be an integrated budget process that starts in October. So everybody is at the table, the select board, the finance committee, the department heads uh, working on budgets. Uh, in one form or another for, for a very long time. So uh, the impression I got is that the, <coughs> the consensus has already been built and we're just going through a formality of uh, submitting a balanced budget in, in March because we've all talked through all the issues uh, in a way that not only addresses the financial concerns but also the operational and capital uh, needs of the, of the town. And I think that was part of what uh, you were talking about is that we need to get beyond just how much money do we have and what can we, how can we deploy that money in order to provide services, but really get a, a chance to understand as a select board and as, as finance committee, what are the services, what does the community need, uh, what does the community mm -hmm. want. Uh, so. And the last thing that came up, excuse me, was that um, the select board has a liaison which is in contact with each and every one of the department heads. The department heads thought it'd be useful if there was a um, of someone from the finance committee that was uh, connected with them as well and via email so that you always had somebody, there was no surprises to your board either. I mean, when things came up or questions or, or requests or things like that, they could communicate with you probably, you know, via email, uh, not necessarily sit in in meetings and things like that. But if there was a liaison from the finance committee associated with the department heads, they thought it, it would help the communication and there'd be far less surprises to you guys as well. I think, I think communication was our biggest problem in the last two years and that we uh, oftentimes didn't 
get the data before the meeting and or the data we got when we got to the meeting it was different data by the time we got here so there was no we had no time to look at anything think about anything you know go and talk to people about what it's at all right so uh, and, and i disagree that in january 15th we had a balanced budget because that was part of the problem the budget wasn't balanced without using free cash so if we had a balanced budget in january I think we would have been in better shape than we were. It seems to be so fluid, though, until we actually move even closer to that date, that January, I know, is supposed to be our target date, but it's difficult at times just to pin down that number right then and there. Uh, January is just the proposed yeah, it's budget. the roll -up. Oh, This right. is the proposed roll -up. And I mean, I think also that Howard had proposed you know, working on the revenue before January. Yeah, and that's, so I that think that's the way it's laid out. all yeah. agreed on the revenue numbers as well, instead of having what happened this year where we had to go back and look at the revenue mm -hmm. later on when we were trying to balance the budget. Right. And also to, to that point in the revenue discussion, you know, trying to engage the um, treasurer and assessor and, and collector is needed, you know, earlier in that process mm -hmm. as well. And again, that, that changed, too, from the increase in meals taxes and what we received, and to the excise taxes were uh, elevated also this year, and that wasn't known then either at that time. So they had a couple of different variations there on where the money was coming from, too. So um, didn't expect it, and it, and it happened. So we'll all take more money. That's no problem. But Can I ask you a question while she since you have the Mosey in. Um, what you were just saying about, about Vader having the three levels of budgets. So just for the sake of argument, so the say there's a first pass of the budget. So all, all the department heads, right. you know, any sort of technology or access issues aside, but if all the department heads put their budgets in, mm -hmm. and for the sake of argument, the first roll up is, you know, total expenses of, you know, $18 million. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that point, that really rolls over to a level two. Well, so then yeah. it comes to so then we start, right. you know, gnashing teeth and calling right. people in and all of that stuff that happens after that. Um, you know, maybe David, based on information and discussions he's had with people, um, recommends mm -hmm. line item adjustments to you, those. Yeah. So after the initial budget, I shut everybody off because we don't want anybody playing. But either David or I. Right, going in afterwards right. have always been. So, in, in what you were just talking about, if, if the department heads budgets are frozen as is, mm -hmm. and say that's level one, mm -hmm. does that like get copied over to level yes. two? Okay, and so then level two, mm -hmm. you can then make line item adjustments. Right. And then level three, theoretically, would be the final. Yeah. And then you can just up, then mm -hmm. three is what you put in, you pull in mm -hmm. for Jan July one. Is that how that works? Yes. Okay, and then there's an audit trail to see what's changed between level right. one and level two. Right. Two or three. I believe there's one or two other Vader calls. Sounds like I think they're out on the Cape somewhere. I can't remember, but I had a conversation, and that's how they do it. Basically, the initial level, the second review, and then the third, final, what they present to town meeting. Okay, and that that's generally how I've seen those budget mm -hmm. mod modules for like right, way to right. Put it, it rolls over, it freezes, and then you. So when we first tried levels with uh, Vader, I think the only the changes showed mm -hmm. up in the second or first. First level was the input, second level was the, the changes, and I don't think all the information got presented in the second level. Mm -hmm. It was just what was different. Okay. Is that, is that, did they change that in Vader? They must have changed it, yeah. it or maybe I wasn't doing it correctly. Okay. And even if that was the case, the worst thing you, that would happen is you would just, because you can export that to Excel. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, definitely. So we could just dump it into Excel and then have the formula be, you know, column A, yeah. plus or minus column B. Yeah, you can do it that way as well, rather yeah. than use beta if you're not comfortable. Okay. But that initial process can definitely move it over to an Excel spreadsheet very easily. Okay. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. At the Mass Selectman's meeting the other day, uh, Senator Rosenberg thought that the budget from Governor Baker would be in within a week to 10 days from the first. So we'll see. See, have you heard anything more than that? No, last time I heard they were still in conference. I uh, hadn't heard any 
results out of conference yet. Well, once the uh, conference is done, then it will go to Governor Baker, and then he's got 10 days to sign. Mm -hmm. So the way that we left it with the department heads was that, you know, based on any conversation tonight, I mean, I think that it warrants getting a little bit more specific instruction out to them. You know, we talked kind of at a high level today, but that we would then make an actual request to say, please be, um, you know, working on the SWOT analysis um, and, and have a, um, an initial due date on that. So. so that was what I was thinking. We're kind of, the schedule is, we kind of, the schedule we've been looking at, we're a little off. Mm -hmm. So how do we want to adjust the schedule and then start passing out the directions to the department as of what to do. I mean, we're, we're July. Um, that's where we wanted to be department, talking about the department of discussions with their reviewing their SWAT, but we probably won't be doing that now until August. Well, we, we talked today about the possibility of them having something like that, recognizing that the move is happening. You know, the whole, let's, on the forefront, I think, of people's minds, but that um, a lot of that, a lot of what we're asking for is likely already in department managers' heads to a point. Um, we're asking them to put it in more of an analytical format and commit it to, to writing, but um, that by the, you know, kind of targeting the tail end of July, early part of August, we can ask. I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is people are unable to meet those days, right? So uh, on August, uh, July 13th, we'll have completed the move over to, uh, to the public safety complex. We theoretically will have a fully functioning town hall over there. And uh, you and I have a meeting scheduled for Friday the 17th mm -hmm. to talk about IT as well. And this might be a great opportunity to talk about the SWOT analysis. Uh, it gives everybody a chance to iron out all the bumps and hiccups that would come from the move. Uh, so maybe that would be a time when, since we'll be meeting with the departments anyways in the same building, maybe that would be a good time to put together a time frame for certain products out of this calendar. That's two weeks away. Right, I mean, I think, I think we could get the instruction out to them earlier than that. So I'd be happy to draft something up, run it by you, and then sure. shoot it out. Um, that, that way they can at least be thinking about it and working on it. But then the actual you know, presentation of that likely wouldn't be until after. Mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, we're meeting on the 15th. And then we're not meeting again until, we haven't scheduled another meeting until the 1st of August. So it does beg the question, I mean, could we do it at the August 5th meeting? Would that be a target date? Or are we going to want to kind of pull them together? I would imagine that we'd want people to submit them, take a look at them, mm -hmm. and then, s then have people. I mean, we're not going to be able to see everybody in one night anyway. No, and that's the other thing is what schedule. Which ones do we think are the most important ones to bring in first, to give them the first, because then I don't think you want to phrase it down. Uh, yeah, I think we do. No, I would say the potentially impactful ones, because some people will have potentially big right. numbers attached to what they're thinking and others won't. So. so everybody feels their department is the most important, as they should. Yes. Right. So you know, it's prioritizing what the needs are of the departments that which is what we decide is which one we think is the most important to be first the needs are greater not most important um i think or, we're using the same word yeah. i'm using the southern de de definition yeah. of that word. yeah that doesn't fly northern. up here <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but if yeah but if, so the idea would be that we would collect all of that we would have a discussion and then decide yes you know how to, how to schedule it from that point but if we could target them having something to us by that august Fifth select board meeting, would that be reasonable? Well, if we have it by the 29th, that would be better. Then we have a week before the meeting for everyone to look at it. Mm -hmm. And this, the fifth is when we is, should be the tri board meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we have it to oh, everybody, right. we can all sit down and talk about the tri board meeting on the fifth. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So July 29th, target delivery. Yes, no. We got a by agreement. Board. We got a by board meeting here right now. So yeah. it's August. Um, I'm on vacation the last week in July till like August third. So if I had time when I return, I would look at it. But um, at least it'd be waiting for you. Hmm? It'd be waiting for you. <laughs> No, we still want a lot of other things. <laughs> you have to go and enjoy your vacation. <laughs> so that's, I mean, let's try to have them have everything to us by the 29th. Right. What, what information is on that? Was given at that point? It's basically a SWOT analysis. So a kind of a, a State of the Union from the department head saying, you know, here, here's, uh, here are the key issues. Yeah, here, here are the key issues facing the department right now. Here are our goals. Here are things that are working well. Here are things that appear to be an inherent weakness, whether that be you know, staffing issues or you know, I don't know, whatever, access to grants, that kind of stuff. Um, and from a service delivery standpoint, you know, where they see the opportunity for improvements and things that they're concerned about. Um, so, for example, like if, if the school was doing a SWOT analysis, one of their threats, I'm sure, would be the continuing diminishment of accessibility of grant funds. That, that's a threat. I mean, they, they can't control it. It's out there. They had a 14% decrease this year that they reported when they brought their budget forward. So, other things that, you know, departments across town might, so that kind of traditional SWOT analysis. So kind of keeping it at 5,000 feet and not worrying about what the budget looks like right now. So if we go with that, 29th, we ask the department has to give us their written, and then we'll sit down and talk about it at the tribe world. Yeah. Okay. I'm really, I'm really am curious to see what the schools say. Because, I mean, the regional, not the regional school, but the Smith Boak is actually, becoming a bigger issue in their budget than even mm -hmm. charter school. And yeah. I mean, it's like Smith Boak is now probably as expensive as any school in the eastern part of the state. Or more expensive than Amherst is per year. Yeah. It's like 18,000 is what they were saying. Yeah, I'm trying to, when I was, when I first got on school committee, I want to say that the Smith Boak tuition was in the neighborhood of 12, and then I remember it jumping up to 14, and then I think 15, and I, I, I don't know what the number is now, but it's north of that. And yeah. I can remember when it was six and eight, so, Oof. yeah. And they're, and they're talking, talking steadily. And they're talking about, I mean, we have no input into that. We have no say, no, no representation. But it's re regional. And it's not even regional. I mean, I mean they're control over it. Yeah, it's like pseudo-regional. North Hampton is, the mayor is oversees yeah, the... they make it up. Smith Folk budget. And they tell us what we will accept, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something, I mean, that actually is something that we... I know there's some discussion about re reframing how they operate and how they'll function. That's something we really need to be involved in getting involved in as a regional, as a board, because otherwise we'll just be stuck paying those high, high bills and there'll be no recourse. And then plus they we're talking about a capital plan, which they want to assess all the uh, participating communities with the capital plan. Okay, so we talked about that. So we're going to have the department heads come in, <clears throat> do their thing. Um, so then when do we want to try to start so if we go over it on the 5th, what's a rough schedule we want to try to work out for coming to some agreement and maybe doing a public presentation to get people's input? For when? Fall or spring? Which uh, one are you talking about? Well, this is for the annual, annual town meeting. All right, so we're marching now to the annual town meeting. That's the fall town meeting. Is, yeah, is there a regular budget cycle? Mm -hmm. okay. Are you going to bring them in at the beginning of the strategy, or are you going to bring them in before well, or right after the department heads present us with their? Well, our uh, original schedule that was presented was to do it in August. Right. So, so I think we need to get through a first, we would need to have a conversation with all of the department heads before we could think about having any sort of public information session. So we want to shoot for sometimes in September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so. something we probably need to think more about how to 
to advertise and get out to people. Mm -hmm. We probably can't have all this in our, in our room here. You actually have a whole public forum in October. Uh, well, there's one in, October, in um, August as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that high level one, that second mm -hmm. one. Yeah, so that in all likelihood would be at the very earliest, the very end of August or the beginning of September. Then we agreed to use for our wage and our salary and wage today. We're going to use the um, Hampshire Council of Governments and the uh, Franklin Council of Governments, mm -hmm. just what they have for right now. For wages? For wages and salary. Will we be able to get that information this month? We should be able yeah, to. So the FERCOG one is online. So. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. And the HCOG one I've requested. Okay. When school starts again in September, I'm sure we could, even though it's going to be late, on just another another set of numbers to look at. If we could get you know, one of the UMass students involved in this, because they said they would be more than willing to help us. Mm -hmm. We've just been dragging our feet getting them involved. We'll do like go ahead and go through the chancellor's office and ask now for. Uh, Are people going to, um, speaking of the Chancellor, is anybody planning on going to Hillside next week, the 8th? No, yes. I'll be there. I didn't get invited to select that so I did my other job. Okay. Well, there'll, there'll be three of us there, so we can kind of yeah. circle the wagons a little too. Mm -hmm. You go Remember, there's no alcoholic drinks at the agency anymore. There aren't? No. No, no I'll not go to <laughs> Lemonade, nice thing. I can't, I can't remember to pronounce his name, but uh, since he's been here, all his little get togethers with the town have all been alcohol free. It, he has this wicked cool punch, but I don't think there's any alcohol in that either. It's, but it's, uh... So you're saying we should bring our own? <laughs> no, I'm just telling it. I have noticed. This is on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I have noticed they don't last as long as they used to last. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's probably the point. Method to his madness. Yeah. It's probably it probably is. Come in, say hello, and have a little punch. Okay, so we kind of played around the schedule a little bit. Do we want to talk more about the anything uh, budget transfers while we are here? We do have some budget transfers. We're going to present. We can talk about them all together at one time if you'd like. So, so I know Howard had some the last time we were here, but we uh, we did not discuss them, and he is not here. So, do you know who is coming from? I have no had no contact with Howard. So. Yeah. Gail, Gail, I know gave uh, Howard the information that was already approved. Um, when is the last day for finance committee action? Technically, the 15th. The 15th. But, but tech, I'm going to have to make it work. All right. Um, well, I haven't seen them. We have some other budgets that uh, came in a little hot. I mean, I assume we need a form to sign this, right? Right. So we need so them let's, here. Let's just talk. I need the select so board to take else. action. Or is Terry on here? We're running a little short of money. Is Terry gone now, too? Yeah, Terry's gone, too. Yeah. Um, so she has a conflict with her other job in the evening meeting, so mm -hmm. this is not working for her. Yeah, they meet every Wednesday night. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, if, we're, if we really need her, she could be here, but most of the time she cannot. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's just walk through, and Gail's here to answer questions. Do you have as a copy well. of one? I don't. I, will I don't have the only copies. I will give you mine and I'll share these here. There's a couple of new ones. Yeah, these are the new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Can I write on these? These aren't the Those are yours. 
so let's let's uh, do the first one, which is police payroll. Uh, as you know, that we're having uh, uh, we're taking efforts to control overtime, but uh, and we've been successful to some extent, but we still have a uh, payroll in FY15, which is going to come up short by twenty-two thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars. We're recommending a transfer from five accounts, which is allowed. Um, from police expense, we have extra money in police expense, $5,000, which is the statutory limit for that, uh, that expense account. Uh, fire payroll, again, another $5,000, and again, that's the statutory limit. Workers' compensation, we have uh, money in there, we can transfer 5000 Medicare came in, we were really worried that this would come in hot, but it uh, ended up showing a surplus, so a transfer of 5000 from there. And from health insurance, there's a little bit left over, 2365 for a total of 22365 which would cover the police payroll. Should I go on, or do you want to talk about this? I think it's... So this isn't a reserve fund transfer. This is not a no, yeah, reserve, okay, fund. This reserve fund transfer. Right, but we just okay. have to have an agreement. I'll make a motion on our side that we accept the transfer of the five departments to cover the police payroll of twenty-two thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars. No. Second. No. Any other discussion? Just the discussion to Lynn's point. Just the way that this is worded, it says request is hereby made for the following transfers from the FY14 reserve oh, fund. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that's what Lynn was just teeing up. Yeah. Every, every, every one of them is like that. So can we just? Yeah, just switch it over. Shoot. Yeah, I just was trying to get so much done. No, that's fine. So can we just say request is hereby made for the following line item transfers? Mm -hmm. In accord, isn't it same in accordance with? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's the same as general. So then, my question to this is, we're almost, well, it's phase July 1, so what do we see as additional rollbacks that are coming from the police budget? What do you mean? How much left is in the expense side? He had about 12000 so there's 7000 and it's... I, I haven't seen his gas in, deep in oil bill, um, but he should be okay with the balance. He'll have about one, <coughs> maybe $1,000 left. So everything else in the budget is going to be fine. Yeah, yes. And if you know if something happens where it's a couple hundred bucks, I know last year we had uh, we had used a canine expense account because one of the cars with the gas. So if we're off just a little bit, it, it shouldn't impact too much. Okay. But he didn't have any. I talked to Chief Mason this this afternoon, and he thought the seven thousand would be fine. Any other discussion? Um, why is the fire department money going into the police department? We had a surplus in the fire department payroll, uh, and the fire chief uh, offered to help the police chief out with uh, the, uh, the overtime. So he's uh, he volunteered that money. And their budget is, they have no unexpected Overages in the fire budget? No, payroll, uh, um, payroll he's fine, one more, and it should all fit. He had like 11000 left in payroll. The 6000 should be more than adequate to cover the, uh, June, the June payroll. This was discussed about two or three days ago when he only had two or three days left in the year to, to cover. And his expenses, I know he's been keeping a tight rein and really mindful. I know he's already gotten a reserve fund transfer once this year to cover some major repairs. So I know he's very mindful of his bottom line. This money's already spent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just it's, it. it's just a point that's been brought up a couple of times. Uh, all the other department heads and departments are staying within their budget, and the police department is going out of control all the time. They're not going out of that control. That he needs this to is, address. They're not going out of control. This is over time, and it's a lot less than what it was last year. It was thirty-eight thousand last year, so they've already done some something better this year. So it's it's turning around. Let's not be too critical yet. Yeah, we don't really, I understand what John's saying, and I, what, what gets me is we don't actually know all the, all the rollbacks when you actually do the numbers around. So that's why, why I asked that question, because 
if they're going to have ten thousand dollars that that's coming back at the end of the of the budget season because they didn't spend another line. Exactly. Why are you transferring it from another department? Mm -hmm. right. then, because then when we go and look at their budget yeah. next year, their budget's not going to look correct. There's because it's because you're moving money between budgets, correct? I mean, I don't fully understand yeah. this, but exactly. you're actually going to take thing five thousand dollars out of the fire department budget. So when we look at the fire department and they request the same budget as this year with the 5000 and it's going to look like they're getting an increase yes. when they didn't really get an increase. So yeah. that's the problem with that. Right. And the other thing is, departments. like DPW, sometimes over the past 20 years anyway, they've taken a lot of the budget to offset snow and ice. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's, that's the proper way to do it because now you got four or five trucks sitting down there that need repairs that are sitting until July 1st or the first snowfall, you know, the budget's, budget's there for those departments for them to use. I mean, they're, they're not buying Cadillacs and brand new dump trucks and pickups and everything else. They're, they're just maintaining what they got. And last year, I think, didn't we say that the police department went to town meeting to get the overtime approved? We did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we wanted the town to recognize that they there was still a problem with overtime. Like I said, we've already... I know we're working on it, we're working but... On it. It, the, the real issue is, is that as we move money in the lines, it makes the lines look wrong yes. when we're doing next year's budget if you're not paying attention to the yes. fact that we that's took five like from here. And, yeah, but why, why does it look wrong? You usually look at the actuals. I mean, that's how I look at it. I look at what you actually spent, not what you budgeted. Yeah, but well, you take 5000 budget compared to the actual. Is any of that with full numbers? So the budget numbers off. The end of the year, I do an Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and Howard helped me develop it, and I have a separate column for when I do the transfers, so you can see it on. This is the one-page spreadsheet. It has tracks everything that's encumbrances, because that doesn't show up what's been encumbered either. And it just shows everything in its place, and I'm more than happy to share it once I go through it, so you folks do have the accurate information. Okay. Now, what's, what's this, is there a date that this covers up to what? Uh, June, uh, June 30th. Okay. Yeah. So there won't be another one for no, the there, okay. the, there should not be another one for well, there, police pay from. There can't. There isn't. Well, only well Gail just got done explaining that yeah. the money that they have left over in the budget is enough to cover both budgets from fire, fire and from police. But it's a done. Now the budget has gone into the next cycle. It's, you, yeah, you, verified to, you verified today that there was no other. Uh, Right. Overtime in the last pay period, so this is the final overtime number right, right. here. The so Chief Mason gave us the numbers what we're going to be paying for June 29th, the basically the past few days. So I have that in hand. I went through it, and this should be it. Yeah, because we're in the new year right now. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was like letting yeah everybody came in my office today. Can we spend? Can we spend? No. <laughs> okay, so we have a any more discussion. So for the select board, do we want to we have a motion and a second to recommend this one. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Upstate. Why are you upstate? Aye. Fire department. Oh, fire. Okay. What did you say? Aye. Aye. Sorry about that. I apologize for my phone. Okay, that's my only calculator. Okay, so but our to next the, the finance the, committee's point, though, we need to make sure that we keep this yes. track. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So, so the next one. The next one will be for dispatch. Um, the payroll came in flush, but there is expenses uh, for utilities and uh, and gas bills, so it came in high, uh, and so we're requesting a transfer between payroll to expenses. For dispatch of four thousand mm dollars. -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right. Any discussion? And this is all internal here. Yeah. This is internal this is right, right now. Right I'll, 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 I'll flag what, what's not. Okay. So no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So this is Aye. for what kind of expense? Well, this is for utility Utilities. bills and uh, gas bills. So how come we just 
just notice now at this point in the year that we're over that much in utility and in gas bills? I guess that's one of one of our issues is that did we know like in the middle of the year that we were going to be? No, we've been we've been tracking these budgets uh, throughout. Some of them we knew that we were going to be uh, over. So overtime is something that we've been talking about for a very long time. Uh, same with uh, the town hall, and uh, we also knew that the that last snowstorm in April uh, created a deficit in the uh, in the snow and ice. Other budgets uh, we've been looking at and seeing that they're very tight, but we were wondering, you know, is it going to come? Are we going to make it or not? And so this is one of the ones where we weren't quite sure until the last that we were going to have a problem. Well, we so knew, for we knew in May. so for so for example in. Um, uh, legal. We didn't know if we were going to need a transfer for legal until we got that last bill, and then we were able to know at that last minute that we were okay for legal. Uh, the, ga the gas bills for the police and fire station, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so we had a real cold winter that we didn't plan on. We had inefficient furnaces in there that were there when they built the place. Mm -hmm. And I believe we just replaced the garage doors there also, three of them in the front, and, and doubled the R value. the R value of the doors. So, so next winter, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we will prevent some of this from next year. And Gail, did, I thought you did have a note on this in one of the reports that you sent us. <clears throat> I always did a, I do the full data, and then I do a summary with Excel with the selectmen's budgets, basically. And the percentages are always there, so when you come into March and see a budget's at 80, 85 percent. So I, I think in, in the month of May is when this became yeah. no 16. But we we actually didn't, we didn't see the wrap up of the until June. So June, right? Yeah. So that's so, just the delay we have in our system. <clears throat> so the next one is street lights. Uh, 1750. This is an estimated amount. This is a reserve fund transfer, not a line to line transfer. Uh, and the rates increased midwinter. We hadn't budgeted for that. We we'll just need a little bit extra to get us through. In St. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. This one over at the end of May. But the posting didn't it, the bill wasn't posted until June twelfth, so we're close. Which we don't get the bill until actually June second, third, so yeah. All right, so is there a motion for Make that? a motion. Second. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, last and one. The last one is a little bit more complicated. Um, we, um, the Board of Health condemned a property on River Drive, uh, and as part of that, two cats had to be taken out of the of the house and boarded with the Valley Veterinarian. Uh, that situation went on for longer than anybody anticipated, and Valley Vet uh, has uh, incurred expenses uh, to the tune of uh, $2,262 for the two cats. Um, the owner of the property is under an obligation to pay that veterinary bill, um, but hasn't been able to do that or has refused to do that. Uh, so the, fine, the Board of Health is using leftover funds in order to pay part of that bill, and they're looking for uh, a transfer from Board of Health payroll to Board of Health expense of $1,200 in order to make up the difference between what they can afford directly out of their budget uh, and what the bill is. With the, the feeling is twofold, is that this is an obligation incurred by the town when we took the cats out of the, of the house and boarded them with Valley Veterinarian. Um, and that we have a relationship with Valley Vet uh, in, and we're going to be using them in the future. So we want to make sure that a local business doesn't get uh, uh, get dinged for working with the town. And the other is that uh, we intend to follow through with a either small claims uh, uh, or lean lien on the property in order to recoup this money 
Um, so when the property is eventually auctioned off, it will it will reimburse the town for the expense. And then this is also internal. This is also <coughs> within the board of health budget. So we're we're taking it from salaries and putting it towards expense. That's correct. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? This was their request. This was their request. I met with them last night. They voted this. So my only question before we vote is, in their salary line, was the extra salary because someone was missing for a while, or? I can probably answer that. I think for a long time, and I think it's probably been corrected for FY16, the animal inspectors paid as a stipend versus payroll. So the payroll money was up there, but the stipend there was enough that this year to cover it down in the expense part. So that's where the extra salary is. It has been spent, but just in the expense part of the budget. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, so those are the and, there's, that's it, that's just four. and there was two we did earlier, or one we did earlier. Uh, we did, we did the clerks, which I don't think we need anymore. We election. Did, we, yeah, for the elections, we we did one for. For Snowdale. Uh, the debt, yeah. and we did one for town hall. All right. So I guess we need to get all those to the finance committee now. Yeah. So they let them go over them and do their thing. All right, the last thing we were going to talk about on our tri-board agenda was the five-year, an updated five-year budget. Mm -hmm. Our updated budget projections. So, what we have, we have FY15, which is now the, it says projected, that's now the actual uh, I don't think we've closed everything yet. No, next yet. week should be the final warrant, and then the 15th I'll get all the encumbrances. So this and is the voted number, not the projected number. This is the voted. For voted for 15. 15. FY 15 special town meeting voted. Is a column in here? So that's just the budget. Oh, uh, okay. Is that? Yeah, so we. I guess what it says. I think the revenue is the projected and then the expense says voted. The FY15 revenues? It says projected. Yeah, so those are projected because we haven't we haven't worked out all of our revenues for 15. Right, but the, the point is that the, the expenses aren't projected. The expenses are just the voted budgeted amount. Correct. But the revenues Correct. are projected. So yep. we have a, a mix of projection and Budget in that town. Mm -hmm. um, they, just so you know, the re revenue side, they are the revenue is based on the recap sheet, which is sent to Department of Revenue. Yeah, in October. In October. Well, November. When I think it's like November, December, yeah. when it's finally finalized. But I won't put them into the final. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is that point fourteen still estimated? It looks like it because we've got some looks like it is round numbers. So, yeah, because the estimated equals the budget. When does that become actual? A year it should ago. have been when I sent everything to the state last year. <laughs> yeah, so, so we can, we can up, update that to actual. So, are those the actual numbers or are those the estimated numbers? I believe those are the actual numbers. But see, if you look at, okay, so the first few line items, so under the property tax levy, the FY 2014 budgeted amount is exactly equal to the FY 14, what's labeled estimated. Right. And then the same thing with the next grouping of state aid. But then when you get down below to the local receipts, the local receipts appear to have been updated mm -hmm. for actuals. Yep. So. The, the first amount, the, uh, the, the property tax, that's actual. Um, the state aid is actual. I didn't change that. The uh, local receipts are actual. Yep. That estimate can't be right because you got 14598386 
unloaded and your estimated is 143332 all so we can't be right. So we just need the so those numbers need to be verified and okay. and make sure so twenty fourteen we budgeted a number and that was really the estimate and this twenty fourteen column here should be the actual we received. Yeah, okay. so it looks like the actual was fifteen point two. Do. Relative to a budget of fourteen point nine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the FY twenty fifteen projected is what we projected in the budget cycle, or is it the we projected and some actuals in here? That's uh, during the budget uh, after after the final town meeting. We projected these uh, these FY fifteen revenues. Uh, based upon our best estimate of uh, local receipts and uh, state aid. So next week we should know, we should have all of those FY15 uh, actual. I don't know, because next week we're just going to be on straight. I mean, I know Linda's working on it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to post till, till after I get over the police station. But, but shortly. Shortly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the FY16 is the budget. Right. So any discussion, any more? Just um, so one of the things I think that um, I'm hoping we can spend some time on is, um, and it's in the calendar, talks about looking at FY15, like really spending some focus time looking at what we budgeted for this most recent fiscal year relative to you know, how the actual expenditures laid out. Um, and I'm also thinking that from the standpoint of these projections, it's also worth spending some time kind of analyze, doing a trend analysis, but looking backwards and, and carrying those forwards to see you know, the reasonableness of those, those projections in future years as well. The accuracy? Well, they're projections, so. But the historical accuracy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how far off have we typically been? Because that kind of helps inform, are we continuing to project and be off, or do we need to Adjust. change our thinking? And, and also, I think it's really important, too, that we document um, and memorialize any assumptions that are going into those future numbers. Because like, you know, David and I were just having a conversation today. I mean, at one point, you know, a five-year projection was done, and who knew that the act of legislation would create the meals and hotel tax in a future year. So, I mean, you didn't even know about it. So obviously your projection was going to be off because it was something that didn't exist. So, you know, just kind of spending a little bit of time talking about that I think will be worthwhile. I think we can do that, you know, when Gail's got her numbers down, probably do it in concert with the review of FY15. So just let us know when you want to do it, when you think you're... It'll probably be towards the end of July when I've always had that information. Because part of the big component is the school, and a lot of times I'm sitting there waiting for the school. All right. So that really holds me up. So Budge them along a little bit. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> so actually, let's, let's shoot for the... Let's go ahead and just shoot for the first meeting in August. Mm -hmm. I should have rough, rough estimates because I know there's some things with the treasurer and I, but at least to get your expenses down and revenues down, I should also be able to do that. Yeah. And as long as we know what's like open and how, yeah. I'll know what the I swing know factor what the conferences are. The swing factor, I know we're working on it, so. Okay. All right. So, is there anything else we want to talk about? Is the tribe board? Tribe board. Yes, no. Nope. I'm sorry. Yes, no. Thank you for coming.
So how many people are you short on the finance two. committee now, too? Uh, so, yes, because Linda is no longer, and Terry desperately needs to get off, so we're short to you. Linda's so, no longer? Linda well, Sanders. Linda can't. Linda she, yeah, yes, yes. she can't be yeah. on the finance committee. It's actually, it's actually really yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. So it's Hadley law, not the state law. I have That's a suggestion for Brian, but um, did you run it by him? I thought he was working on someone. No one told me who, but I thought someone said he was working on someone. <coughs> Howard maybe told me that, but okay. I don't know the name. I'll have to give him a call. Yeah, because the issue is if we don't, if one person misses, we don't have a quorum, so right, we can't right. really mm -hmm. decide on anything. Well, there's anybody at home listening right now and <laughs> is interested or knows someone they might want to sacrifice to the finance committee. Well, it was Amy Feiden that said that she was interested. She had been on a finance committee the last time she lived in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so that would be kind of a help to have somebody know the background. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. See if she's still interested, we can have Brian give her a call. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you next month. All right. So we are a little five minutes before seven, but we're already in our select board meeting, so we'll just roll into the unscheduled items. So we have our consent calendar. Uh, our consent agenda. Our consent agenda is the uh, annual appointments. We have the list. Uh, our surplus vehicle requests. Uh, police personnel change. Warrants. And on the warrant list, we need to add warrant 103 and then approval of the minutes of June 17. Is there anything anybody wants to take off? No, I just wanted to remove uh, Phil McCresky from the agriculture area incentive. He has passed away uh, recently, so uh, we need another member for the agricultural area incentive. Okay. And the Shade Tree Committee, I also. Um, reported that Robert LaPrad is not been a member. He resigned a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, so moved on the consent agenda with those changes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. So Still before seven. Yep. I'm start now. So all this is number one. She's so helpful. She. <laughs> I was waiting to see who was walking in. So, old business number one. We had talked once about purchasing tablets for select board members and to work on trying to go paperless. So, Mr. Nixon. So, this is an idea that uh, Ms. Rodriguez developed, so I want to make sure that she has a chance to talk about that. Um, right now, we have a uh, FY15 budget uh, for the select board that shows a surplus of about $3,000. And her idea was that we would purchase tablets for the five select board, which would remain as uh, town property, uh, in order to take the, uh, to set us ourselves up for the next step, which is to have uh, paperless meetings. Uh, and Ms. Rodriguez, would you like to amplify on your research there? Sure. I um, gave some options whether you want to have a tablet or a Chromebook. I did talk to the people from Board Docs, and they said they noticed a trend of more of the committees using Chromebooks instead of tablets just because it has the keyboard. Um, so I just put some samples and prices of what we're looking at, and it'd be up to the board to decide exactly what type of device they want. The easiest. <laughs> I mean, I, I would think, especially it's town property. Um, the only thing, I mean, I'm assuming we'll be signing on some sort of information technology policy anyway, mm -hmm. that it's strictly for town purposes. Right. Um, then having a slim down Chromebook, I, I don't, I mean, again, unless the, the vendor is saying that it, it wouldn't work, but it sounds like it should be fine. Yeah, just especially the Chromebooks are a lot less expensive, so I think that's why you've seen a lot of these towns going to the Chromebook instead of the tablet. All the information will be able to be presented yeah, because it's that we're on, looking for. Right, and you don't even need a lot of memory because if you use an 
application like Board Docs, it's not a web browser. So as long as you have Wi-Fi, you'll be able to access all the documents. So we can go paperless, uh, which will save us a lot of money. Uh, uh, we, we go through about 40,000 sheets of paper a year, uh, and a lot of that is consumed by the select board's office. Uh, we are also proposing that we take the next step, which is to go to board docs and raise money of about $4,000 at the special time meeting uh, in order to have that, uh, uh, have basically an online agenda which would be accessible to anybody uh, on the internet uh, and could be utilized by the board right here. So it would eliminate the need for the books, for the papers. Uh, you would have a lot of resources at your disposal in order to make your decisions. So taking this step would be not in and of itself, but we're asking that you consider it as part of an overall strategy of uh, coming in with a, with a uh, product that we've demonstrated to you before. Uh, that could uh, streamline and, uh, your your meetings, make things more affordable, and provide you with better information. And is it theoretically possible we could find? You said it's four thousand, four thousand dollars for the board docs program. For the board docs, not for the farm board. Right. Yeah. right. So, so we're the, this is covered with the surplus within our own budget. Right. Right. So then the four thousand dollars, in theory, if we could find that funding elsewhere, could we? Yes. Start so the savings plan. Free cash. Free cash would be my recommendation. Well, we want to do board docs first, and then we're going to have an IT request at Ball Town meeting. That's what I'm thinking. And put the Chromebooks in with the other IT items. Well, you need you need the Chromebooks in order to do the board docs. I'm actually just thinking about the reserve fund transfer, going to the finance committee and talking to them about moving four thousand. Yeah. And get it all rolling, and that's it. The surplus left in your FY15 select board budget is not enough to get us to the board docs. We need 4,000 and have three. So, how much is left in the free cash? I mean, the reserve fund. Like uh, reserve fund. I, if everything is approved, there'll be about $15,000 left. There's, so there's $3,000 left in there, and I know my uh, stipend has never been paid out, so you got. Well, under there, is that added in or not? For in the select board's budget. Yeah, that's all part of it. Okay. I'd prefer to get it rolling more quickly. Well, well, first of all, there's a learning curve, so it gives us a chance to start figuring out how to use these. Speak for yourself. I'm lost yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> but that would get everybody a chance to get comfortable with just the basics of using a Chromebook, and then. Secondly, it would start the savings of not printing all that paper that much more quickly. So then really what we want to do <coughs> is to say yes to the Chromebooks and say yes to a request from the finance committee for $4,000 for board docs. Is, should the finance committee chair get one as well for communications? Or uh, we hadn't contemplated that, mm -hmm. uh, so we would have to raise additional money for the, the device. <coughs> Maybe we should get comfortable with it first and then it yeah. consider expanding it. And the other thing is, that, so if the Chromebooks, I'm just taking the, the least expensive one, so it may not be wind up being this, but they're in the $250 range, so if it's $250 and there are five of us, Right. Right. You'll have the money. That's twelve hundred and fifty. We have a surplus of three thousand. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't even have to go to the finance committee for the full amount. It would just be the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> have you had any experience with any of these Chromebooks? Yeah, I got one. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> nephew's got one too. <laughs> My daughter. Which one? That's where I learned from. Which one? The Toshiba. Robert. Uh, he's got the he's got the HP, but I've got it to shoot so. us. I mean, for the price differential, it's probably more uh, case the ergonomic sort of issues than it is the actual functionality of the. Okay, so what do we want to do? We're seeking permission to use the last of your your money for the F one fifteen. We'll encumber it. To make this all happen. So moved. A second. 
any other discussion? Are we adding on the request for the board docs, board docs as well in the motion? Sure. Or, yeah, or maybe a second. Yes. Do I? Yes. Okay. We'll do them together. Yeah, my yeah. Well. Any other discussion about it? Help okay. us all summer to <laughs> test right. ourselves, test our skills. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So it's seven o'clock, pretty close to seven o'clock. Lots of people sitting in the audience. So I know we have a couple appointments. We've got the building committee here looking at us. So is there anybody from the public who wants to participate in our 15 minute uh, open public discussion we have at seven o'clock? <clears throat> no. I, I had just a couple things that for now, kind of announcements. Okay. The uh, ad hoc committee for the um, sign for the public safety complex would like um, a 715 appointment at the next meeting possible on the 15th or we probably could do it in the public comment portion in advance it's mm -hmm. only going to take a couple minutes we'll put you down for 715 excellent thanks jerry what is that committee again the ad hoc committee for the uh signage for the dennis j huckowitz oh, i see yeah. okay um and also uh, i was contacted yesterday uh, from a gentleman who said that we're going to be receiving a letter uh, regarding purchasing of tract of the um, ballpark or they'd like to purchase a tract of it and it's the church uh, and they were a little worried about losing some of their parking spaces and barbecue spaces so it's just a heads up that a letter's coming and that they're going to be interested in, in a portion of that property uh, before it goes out for sale oh okay All right, anything else? Yep. On the same, uh, on a different note here, the Mount uh, Hoyo Grange there, the parking area, we've had a lot of input from a lot of the citizens up in that area. So we definitely, when, when and if they schedule another meeting with us, we, we need to address that with all the citizens in town. So how's that, how's that discussion going? <sighs> Negative or positive? Would you like me to give them your number? No, no, I just, to them I just want negative, positive. A lot of negative. A lot of negative. So um, the, the one thing I would say to the public, anybody who's listening, and if they have a concern, is, is make sure they express that also to the Kestrel Land Trust and to DCR and about this, because um, their take on it is that Hadley is um, very amenable and very uh, welcoming of the project. So the, the problem is, and, and three individuals stated the way I feel also is, it's Mount Holyoke College's property. It's not DCR's. DCR is bringing a request, and they want the town to assume the liability. No, we is would that just, correct? No, we would hold the CR. I think is what we're all we would hold. So the responsibility is there's responsibility we have, but there's not responsibility for the actual structures and, and devices on the property. That's my understanding so far, and I could be wrong as well. Yeah, I've been getting those calls too in regards to inquiries about what the building's going to be used for. There's been a lot of statements uh, to, to some of the neighbors on what's going to happen up there. And it, there's a gamut of different statements of what is going to happen. The, the inquiry to me is, and, have they gotten anything in front of the town for permitting or anything? They said they're exempt from everything and they can do what they please. Uh, so I think we need to get people on board. Uh, is, Mount Hall, is Mount Holyoke College exempt? Good is, question. I don't know what all this is about. I mean, is the property zoned educational or is it zoned something else? It's, it's not, it's zoned agricultural residential. But is it, what is it being used for? I think that's the first question that needs to be asked. What are they proposing on doing? Is it accessible? Is there, it, you know, there's a whole gamut of questions that. There's really no cons uh, com uh, comparison to Mount Warner because right. DCR owns it all or Kestrel owns it all. So it would be good if there's some way of getting people around a table and discuss what is actually going to be happening there. Was it possibly just a gift of land to Mount Holyoke at some point? They have no 
you swear it other than the fact that Who it's a charitable knows? contribution? But there's a lot of activity there. There's a lot of parking right now on the road. There's, uh, and that's that's what why the neighbors are starting to ask because they're parking all over the place. They're parking in people's driveways. People can't get into their own driveways. And, and this is new activity. This is all brand new activity. And there's a ton of people going up to that building. And I don't know. All they got to do is call the tow truck. I haven't been up there in a while. So it's, in my yard. it's, it's gotten, gotten like 15 yeah, in the last few weeks, it's gotten to be Bye -bye. really crazy. OK. So there's more yes. question more. They can call the police for trespassing, too. I mean, you no, know, I think, they, have, I think have there has been some. Well, no, I was actually just going to say that I hadn't heard about it until this week either. And I, I've actually been getting calls about it from some residents who are concerned. Um, I don't, I hadn't really heard anything about it as far as, you know, our log entry goes or any calls or anything. But some of the concerns that the citizens raised caused me to think in the in at least in the same vein where if we have to respond up there for you know the fire department for a fire at, the, at that building or someone injured or Lost whatever papers. it is they're going to use it for um you know one one citizen suggested that there may end up just being parties up there all the time so you know that it, it certainly raises some interesting questions i think we need to answer is it an existing building there's an existing structure of something up there. I've never been there. Uh, it's a bit of a hike off the road. Okay. So I haven't heard anything. Uh, they haven't made a request yet to come back, have they? Not yet, but they're talking about coming back. That was the, what, how we left it. Is that we asked them to get in touch with the neighbors and then come back. Uh, they've left us one phone message saying that they're trying to organize a time when they can come back as <coughs> some dates. So, so to this like, point, they haven't contacted any of the citizens yet, as far as I know. But the citizens that, that had watched the meeting started addressing it, I guess, to you, to myself. You know, I've got a, three of them in particular. And I got a couple calls yeah. myself. So the Kestrel does have a telephone, and so anybody who has a question, they can call directly to them in Mount Holyoke College. And, and ask them point blank, they're welcome. I mean, but to tell the truth, I'm getting, my, what I'm being told from the Kestrel is that everyone is happy about this, no, so. Was this Kestrel or DCR that was in? Kestrel. Uh, Pete Westover is working for, with Kestrel, who's working with DCR okay, and is working right. with. Yeah, Pete Westover is here. No, not Leo College. Mm -hmm. okay. These things get very big. Lots of heart players, though. Okay. All right. So that was our public comment session. I hope you're, hope everybody, if you have something, please come talk to us. We're more than willing and we want to reach out to the public and this is a good time to talk about stuff and get your uh, items talked about on, on the TV.